from the Pathway Studios in Johnston proper. You are live from the path. Listening to Live from the Path. We're coming from the Pathway Studios here in Johnston proper. Merry hey. Christmas or Happy Holidays if you're Boomer and you're you're chicken. Hey, I've been saying Merry Christmas this okay. last week. I don't care really. What? I don't care. It's rude. I don't. Why care. don't you care about me, that Ben? You're a pansy. <laughs> okay, here's what I got going on the show this evening. Um, I don't. I, I don't have, care. I have a random. I have a random rant. I'm going to get on. I'm talking about it in just a second. Uh, it, it probably, it's, in, in most ways, it's probably not surprising. It has to do uh, with, uh, uh, we were reading an Advent devotional at my house. Oh. And I have some thoughts on it. Uh, also, B- Boove has got a couple questions. We we did not get to uh, John's treatment of Judas. Yes. Last week. And so we'll pick that one up. You had, you had another, what was the other question? Was there another one like Philippians? Uh, no, not that it really came into Philippians. I, I thought I had one, but, uh, it was, it was a good book. Okay. So okay, that's, got it. that's, that was my takeaway. And we had a couple other questions, but I don't know if they're, they're show ready. Okay. All right. Maybe we'll pick them up. I do have a few different articles. I, there was somebody uh, posited what would it be like to have like a phone free church a- and not just, I think pulling it out of, um, your Sunday gathering, but like, Hey, we refused to live stream and stuff like this. And I, I, I was kind of an interesting thought exercise, okay. uh, and so uh, maybe, I thought maybe we'd walk through that and get some thoughts. Uh, we're gonna do um, some. We're gonna pull out a trivia. Yes, I'm gonna see. I'll see if there's a. I wonder if there's a Christmas trivia option. A maybe, Christmas trivia. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. I'm the worst guy at trivia. <laughs> Dead is born. no good. Yeah. Um, I mean, you. That's not true. A lot no, of the times true. that we do trivia, you have the random answers that like none of us thought of. Mm. And that, like, it's a it's a weird thing about a Bimelech or something we don't we didn't think of. And you're like, wait a minute, I remember that from 1984. It, it's not fair. Dan did his dissertation on Abimelech. He that's knows right. all true. there is to know. That's true. We can't do any of that. Abimelech focused quizzes because he's like, I know it all. <laughs> As a matter of fact, he he had two daughters, but I if he had <laughs> if that son came along, it was going to be a Abimelech Hudson. Abimelech yes. Hudson. <laughs> uh, okay, and then we'll do some advice on dear life in the path, and then we'll cut you loose. Uh, there's no reason to. Uh, Spend any additional time listening to the program that what you've already committed. By the way, if you are either either we're being scammed, which I was talking before the show to the fellows, and I feel like this is completely possible. Either we're being we're being scammed. Sc- or uh, the the listenership on the show has uh, generally been increasing over the last number of months. So if you are a new listener to Live from the Path, I, I need you to let you know about the initiation. This is it's not for you. It's not at you directly. It's just anybody who starts to listen to the program. Once you listen to three. You're not obligated, but you should feel a moral guilt to go buy something from the Life from the Path shop. Yes. Uh, you can do it for Christmas or birthday or whatever, but go to lifefromthepath.org backslash shop. Or if you go to just lifefromthepath.org, choose the shop option at the top. And uh, there's a bunch of random goods in there. We make almost no money on them. Uh, it's just expensive to like print things one at a time because I don't trust enough that we could run 500 shirts and 500 people would want them. It doesn't seem likely to me. So if you want them that bad, you got to pay a little premium for it. But I just you know, I ordered a few yeah. uh, for uh, for Christmas gifts. They're good products. Yeah, yeah. They uh, I, I did. I actually have just so you know, I do test these things because uh, I I'm a little bit persnickety on the shirts, and so uh, there's a tri blend in there that uh, it wears well. It's comfortable. Oh, uh, it fits. Nice. It's gener- It's generous to to fellas, and uh, that's it's a it's a high quality shirt. So generous. I, I almost bought the uh, playing cards the other day, and uh, the problem is I couldn't remember the password for my uh, PayPal. Oh no! Because I. I <laughs> I was either going to charge it to the church or to me, and I thought, well, it'll be awkward charging it to the church. So I wanted, you know, wanted to make sure Can't I had to justify correct. this purchase. Then I forgot about it on the church budget. <laughs> okay, They're don't gambling. It's okay. Don't be a Bama like Hudson and forget to go buy these playing cards. Actually, I almost bought the playing cards because they're like if you're here's the deal: you want to tip your toe in and you don't want to spend too much money. I think they're five bucks or something. Like they're. Seven I something. They were like sixteen. Oh no, sweet <laughs> Moses! No, that's Man, maybe that was just for me. Oh, maybe it was the stickers. <laughs> the stickers were like a dollar. Anyway, just go out, heads up. Uh, <laughs> if you listen to the program, you really stickers. you should buy. Nobody buys anything. I'm just I made that up, but you I, should. You the hat's buy. nice. That's all I know. Hey, the hat's out. 
the supplier for the hat is done <gasps> again. Yes. Like gone completely. Like I can't, I couldn't even replace it because I was going to order one. I need a new hat. Mine's in rough shape. Huh. Mm. I know what I'm disappointed. Anyway, do whatever you got to do. Do we have beanies still? Uh, I, we should get beanies. Okay. I'll, I'll check on All it. Right, All right. We're going to start with phone free church. Uh, a thought experiment inspired by a recent Atlantic piece. What if we banned phones from public worship? My goal here isn't to persuade you. Uh, this is from uh, mere orthodoxy. My goal here isn't to persuade you that phones have done lots of bad things in society. I think Jonathan Haidt, Gene Twinge, and others can give you the data evidence for that. Boy, I was thinking about that on the drive-in. I, I, uh, uh, my phone is just killing me. As a matter of fact, social media is killing me again, and I'm being, and I'm, I'm pretty irritated about it. Uh, even like we run it for the show. I, we're on TikTok. Uh, because the, the when uh, Empty Smith was here, he said, hey, uh, people are responding on the TikTok. I yeah. said, well, shoot, man, I'm cutting the clips up anyway. I should put them on the TikTok. And it's going fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I don't know. They're getting some five, six hundred views every time we put something out, which is great. That's fantastic. Thank you for watching. But like uh, I have to go on the TikTok to 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 put it in there. And then I find myself like I just because it starts, you know, putting something on there. I'm like, like uh, I went on there the other day to post a life in the path video and someone was trying to crack into They bought an ATM. Like that someone had abandoned and huh. then they wanted to see whether there was any money in it. I thought, well, crap, man. I want to know if there's any. I How watched, do you get like, in this thing? I watched three videos. They're like beating it up with a hammer and trying to open it up with a grinder. And uh, I was I was captivated. And I thought, well, shoot, this means nothing to me. I did not. I don't need to take this in. And are, uh, are TikTok, TikTok, <laughs> TikTok <laughs> videos generally like really short. A lot of or am them I are, confusing it with the, the reels? A stuff? lot of them are, but I, they've extended. Now, I think you can go up to like a couple minutes. Oh, okay. Because that's pretty quick to try to get into an ATM. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. They, had, a minute. they I mean, had multiple videos. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You had to watch multiple to get through it. Anyway. Uh, oh, sorry. I, that was a distraction. Uh, rather, I want you to think about what it would like practically for churches to not simply turn off our online streams, but actually purge phones from public worship. Oh, it went the other way than what I said. The necessary, necessary caveats up front. I don't support any kind of plan where churches have ecclesial bouncers at the door confiscating phones. The reality of our world is that many of our neighbors live on their phones. Many are addicted and confiscating phones from strangers would create some significant and unnecessary burden to people visiting your churches. Okay. Uh, that said, what happens if we frame the issue like this? Our leadership has been spending time praying and thinking about the place of smartphones in our life together as a community of Christians who are dedicated to following Jesus. For a variety of reasons, we have come to the conclusion that smartphones are often a hindrance to the development of thick community and even ordinary conversation. So I guess for starters, do you believe that that's true? Is phone, smartphones are a hindrance to the development of thick community and ordinary conversation? Eh, I, I mean, a jar of peanut butter can be too. It, it, you know, it's, it's sure, you can, you can find all kinds of examples of how that is a hindrance. Yes, yes. Okay. But, but it, it, you know... We make it what it is. I, I'd rather work on the discipline of not letting it be a hindrance. Mm, okay. Like it might be, uh, I don't know, things you think about your kids, like you could, um, whatever, we still track. I was thinking about this last week. Um, I, I, I track time, technology time on my kids. Uh, and my oldest daughter is 17. And like, I mean, she probably overuses it, to be honest. Like she in fact, definitely does. But I do. Uh-huh. Uh, right. And uh, to a certain extent, like, I don't know, she's going to have to make her own choices in her life and it be her own discipline. And at some point, I'm not sure where it is, although we're aware of it, I'm not sure it's actually helping except for being a significant rub point on the monitoring of the technology. Like at some point, I got she's just gonna have to turn over to her own responsibility. Yeah. Um, and and I, I think some of those things are is like you're protected in some way in the church where like you can't get into this thing and we restrict all this stuff. But like you're gonna leave, <laughs> and so right, right, right. You know, is there um, there's yeah, there's something in there where like are we preparing people to live out in the world as opposed to being just protected in here? I mean, I mean, forty years ago, MTV was what was you know causing the, all the division in the world, and, and the whole church was gonna collapse. You know, and that, now it's a smartphone. I mean, you know, it's always something. It's just it's 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 the more the that's what I say, more the discipline than self discipline, and and and. Uh, that, I just think that's more key. Is there a difference between like uh, so? That's a good example on things that people argue about. Uh, people weren't watching MTV in the service, <laughs> like your phone. So there's is there something about unique about the phone that it's tangible? Even though we've invited people, like hey, follow along on your phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, right. for the scripture and stuff. I guess have you guys ever done that? Have you ever used your phone as part of engaging in the whatever your worship experience is or something? Very, very rarely. I, I might if I'm in a if I'm like in 
the seat. I might I'll use it as my Bible, but I, uh-huh. Uh-huh. other than that, I don't. Have you ever taught using a phone, Dan? And not probably not. I, I assume maybe not on a Sunday morning, but like at a camp or like something like that. Well, probably yeah, like in, in Africa. I, okay. I mean, yeah. Uh, but usually I'll have because I don't know if I'll have. Well, I won't have service, so I'll have screenshots. Yeah. Um, that I have used before, but I've used my phone work during teaching before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like when I'm doing if all if I if I write out a lesson plan, I'll usually do it on my notes app. And so I have my phone to kind of keep a guideline. Um, and then a lot of the times I'll just use my physical Bible to do scripture. But like, yeah, I've, I've taught from my phone before. Okay. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I, d- I, I have, uh, well, iPad for sure. Um, I think phone maybe once and I really hate it. Yeah. I re- I really don't like it. Um, I, I, it, it does what a phone always does to me, which is it pulls me away. Mm-hmm. I become, I become, um, I hold on to it and I reference back like I'm going to miss something, especially because the screen's so small that like I'm constantly scrolling to make sure I'm in the right spot. Right. And and like I get it. A paper can do that. And like even if you teach from your Bible, you look down, you read from the Bible, it feels like the same thing. For me, tangibly, it is not. It's like teaching from a phone is significantly different. Mm-hmm. I'd rather do nothing. I think now um, I, that's it could be personal, though. I, I don't I don't prescribe that. But like I just know that I, I've tried it and I thought it feels like what I would do if I was jacking around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so I can't I can't like mix a, the things. It's a psychological thing where you're like, oh, this feels like I'm being not insincere. Ins- yeah. Serious. Well, I also feel like um, I was driving. I used to have a thing where my phone. Uh, there's like a, a holder that you can plug into your yeah. CD player yeah. Yeah. and it holds your phone up. And I find that super handy. And I, I, I was taking apart the dash to fix something and I never put the thing back. And so my phone was next to me and I did not realize how often I look at that phone mm. and for like the time or to see if I often keep my phone on do not disturb. I'm like, I don't want it bother me except yeah. for I'm looking at it anyway. Right. Like every, <laughs> I, and I, I noticed it. There was on one particular drive. I thought I, I need to be conscious about this. And I realized I was looking at it so often that I would look at it and it would be the same time. The second time I looked at it, like oh, wow. the, it had not gone a minute before I had glanced over to see. And I thought, yeah. boy, this thing is just like, I'm a grown man yeah. who makes decent decisions in life. And this thing has got me roped up. I'll look at yeah. it. Like surely someone's, you know, important calls coming in and like, I'm not <laughs> expecting one right. I, or a big message on, you know, social media is uh, surely that's coming my way. No uh-huh. email. <laughs> yep. No, no. <laughs> I better look again though to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. So yeah. So I, I, I guess I could see. I actually would find it hard. Um, I would, I would rather hold a physical Bible if I were to go visit someone's church and they were teaching or someone else was teaching. Not because I'm um, a Puritan about it, but because I, I, as soon as I pull up my phone, if something shows up, I'll, see, I'll look. Mm-hmm. I know I will. As, and like, w- like I get work emails. Like, there's people that are working on Sunday morning. A lot of the executives are working Sunday mornings. I, they're pretty consistent about it, actually. And like, I'll look because not only is it, oh, look something, but like, who it's coming from? <laughs> oh, look, I'm fired. Yeah. yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> um, and so I, I, I just, um, I, I think I wouldn't. I, I, think do, I, I do would. the old school paper still, mm-hmm. partly because uh, I think when I first tried to go to the iPad, like the internet was just unreliable. Oh, I'm yeah. like, well, yep. what do I do if I can't have access? You, you know, I just, I right. never had a reason to not do it, but I just didn't. Or now, like often I'll be playing bass. Well, it was the same iPad had oh, that yeah. I would use it. And I'll be playing bass and all of a sudden my notification pops up. Hey, how much have you used the iPad? And it's like, oh, I said, last Sunday's the last time I used it when I was doing this dumb thing, you know, <laughs> yep. and I just get away from there. And so, yeah, it, it distracts you. And all of a sudden you, you forget you're playing music or something and you're like, got to get, get, get that uh, yeah. notification out of the way. And, they gave two. They gave two options here. Um, the that this is a major cause of concern for us for two reasons. And again, it's a hypothetical. Like here's right. something you might write if you were crafting a policy like this. First, we live in a world that is lonely, anxious, and deeply uncertain about what things are worth living for. I, it's it's interesting that they brought that up. I didn't tie that to the phones, but like I think we were having this conversation maybe off air about how um how I it feels like we're having a hard time confronting is not necessarily the word that i want but like reaching topics of like of sin with people or like calling to account of things it feels like we are becoming more fragile and not just like in our emotional reactions to things but like i am more concerned that in reaction to some sort of call to repentance someone might harm themselves than i ever than i ever used to be and like it could just be i'm more sensitive to it because i'm getting older i don't think so though i feel like the uh, the option of becoming desperate and 
taking one moment and making terrible decisions in that in that moment when it comes to like self harm, whether it's suicide or something shy of that, it feels like it's more it's easier to get to. I don't know, Dan. I, maybe I'm just feels like that in my mind. Does that feel like that to you? I think the longer you preach and the more you get feedback on things, you that that will filter through your mind. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, people. There are people that are on the edge and 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 it won't take much to push them over. Yeah, okay. And, and and you're like, you're trying to be sensitive of that while, while at the same time, you know, bring the truth of God. And, yeah. And, 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 and yeah, it, it's, it's quite a rub sometimes. It's like, well, it's, it's, it's sitting on me anyway. So like, yeah, I think yeah. when they say that we're in a world that is lonely, anxious, and deeply uncertain about what things are worth living for. Um, I, and I even think about this as, you know, you look about high suicide rates in um, people with certain lifestyles or people who believe certain things. Mm-hmm. And like, although I think the attribution of those is, is, is wrong. I think we attribute like often they're attributed to, well, it's because you're not accepting. I'm like, ah, it, it may be a confusing way of looking at the world to start. Right. Like that, that's probably more of the rub. Um, but anyway, I, 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 I do feel that. So they say, given the unhappiness and frequent suffering of our neighbors, we want our church to be a place where they can go to find respite, encouragement, and life through the preaching of the gospel and the sacramental life of the church. Okay. Agreed. Second, we live in a world where Christian discipleship is very hard. The things pulling us away from community are everywhere. It's quite easy to become enslaved to the lust of the flesh, to the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life. So we need each other to live the Christian life well, but we won't have each other if we are too busy for regular being together and too distracted for ordinary human encounters to take place. So uh, that, so the, the, the premise then is, is that the interactions that you're having on the phone otherwise are removing you from what they would describe as regular being together and ordinary human encounters. Is that true? Do we believe that to be true? Oh, I don't know if you could blame it on the phone. Like I, I just, I feel like that's just where society's going in general is, is being more uh, cloistered and, uh, and not living outside of your own four walls mm-hmm. uh, societally. Like, I feel like, I don't know if this, if this is sitcom logic or whatever, but I just, I feel like, Society used to be very different even 20 years ago when I was a kid, not even 50 years ago. But like you just don't see the same kind of uh, oh, gosh, I'm going to sound like a sitcom. But like you just don't see the same situations where like communities get together and like, you know, block parties aren't a thing anymore. And people aren't getting together for backyard barbecues in your community very often anymore. It's like it's such a stretch and a push to get people to even like look outside of like i said earlier their own four walls to see that there's more than just their immediate nuclear family i do think i think you are right that it's not uh i think the phone is a, a symptom but not a right. cause yep. I, yeah. I, frankly i think it's busyness a scapegoat. It's i think easy. busyness is a cause yeah yeah um like right, fair. which includes like just all your time is sucked up yep and it used to be that like um i mean you run into this like, kids kids stuff is just so dominating like, I, like we, I, my wife and I have talked about this. Like we, you know, you had a friend group, and when we were, when, when our, our kids were little, like I used to see these people all the time, and like, uh, it, it's like trying to find time where I could, like, you're luck, you're lucky to find once every three months where you could get a group of three or four families together because of how their schedule is. Gosh, right? Uh, and, and frankly, ours, ours at times has started to look like that, and we're like, nope, like we can't, <laughs> we we cannot be that tied up. Um. So like I think it's one busy in being scheduled with just stuff and like it's those that and we've talked about this in show so I won't belabor the point but like it's not that it's unrighteous stuff like none right. of this stuff is like oh well we're busy on Tuesdays and Thursdays at this at the Satan statue da, da, da. <laughs> like they're doing hey we're playing basketball just like someone played basketball fifteen years ago like we're 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 playing uh we're doing a a, a piano practice and we are mm-hmm. doing dance and like these are all things everybody has has done mm-hmm. for decades right. They're, but they are getting more consuming. They're asking more days, more hours, more practices and pictures and all the things that otherwise are coming into it. So I think like the structured stuff is taking up more time. But then with whatever rest, leisure, non-structured time that you have, we are, pardon me, pissing it away on things that actually don't create any relational value yeah. either. Yeah. And th- that's not denying that like there are aspects to a f- to like – uh, digital relationships that are not entirely bad. I, I think that what we're running into is that is we don't do a very good job of keeping them in balance. They're easier to come across. You can consume them as you wish um, without having to do the timely and kind of costly thing of direct engagement, meet a guy somewhere for X amount of time yeah. to even talk on the phone 
for 45 minutes or something like, again, like you would have done readily 20 years ago <laughs> to like, oh, let me catch up with this person. My options are either exchange text messages or see you every six months. I'm not open to a phone call. Mm-hmm. And that's probably something substantively wrong with that because there's a great connection on hearing someone's voice and interacting yeah. with them. Yeah. Um, so I, I agree. I, I think it's not like the, the phone facilitates something that we are prone to. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's how I would think about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I think that's fair. Okay. Um, because of these reasons, our church is taking a few steps to try and remove distraction and busyness from our gatherings. So beginning next week, we have a set of lockers in the welcome center. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So then he says, we're going to, he's going to field a few potential objections. What about families with children in the nursery or Sunday school? Uh, what well, that, that seems easy. Like they put the, you put the number up on the screen. Number thing, yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, that's the, that, that was done before <laughs> we've got the technology for it. You fixed it. How would the phones be stored? Nobody cares. No one's going to steal the phones. Don't care. What about interactive elements of the service that might require phones? Sometimes churches will hold Q&A times, uh, often questions via text message. Uh, okay, we're just going to go back to how we used to do it. I was going to say. Raise your hand. Right. <laughs> what do you think, Ted? <laughs> hey, boss. Got a question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or, yeah, I mean, and even if, let's say, you got a really large church. Uh, one, you're probably not doing random Q&A. Yeah, right. Uh, but even if you were, just put, you know, we used to have, uh, now you're running churches lean on ushers, man. You got like three maybe running all over the place. Used to be you got fifty guys in there standing at each. You got extras. Some guys guarding over the first quadrant of ushers who are gathering the money. <laughs> and so just give them all the microphone and have them take them in sections and do that if you have to. Okay. I don't know. I'm not. Uh, I'm not married to that. I just thought it was interesting to think about. Like, is it possible? W- would it provide? I think non-distracted. Is, pro- is good. Right. Intentional use of your community time is good. So, like, actually, I wouldn't even put this on uh, for a Sunday morning. I think you should probably put your phone away. Like, as soon as you hit the parking lot, uh, you, it's probably a good idea to turn it off so that you meet, you talk, to, you know, hit people in the eye. You greet them. You're not worried about something else that's going to come up. But, like, yep. you should also do that when you go over to their house for the barbecue. <laughs> like, yeah. it's the same. It's the same premise. I'm not sure. There's anything particularly distinct about the worship of which I wouldn't say, go ahead and just apply that broadly. The thing is, anything can distract you. Let's say right. the phones are gone. Yep. When I, when I was a kid, I would sit next to my mom in church and she had a snake bracelet. Like, it was, um, why she had a snake? I don't know. I was but, just about to ask that I know, question. But I, I spent my time playing with that little snake and, and, and making little stories. And I even at the time thought, <laughs> man, this seems kind of weird, like a Genesis thing. Two thing to be why are you bringing a snake into the church? It's a kadoosh. <laughs> but but I have no idea what was going on because I was playing with the bracelet, right? You yeah. know, and, and and you can you can you can in your mind go anywhere you want. I'm a, I'm a you know imaginative guy. I can sit there and be in Hawaii while I'm supposed to be at the church. So I, did, I didn't. I don't need a phone to do that. Yeah, uh, that's true. I, you don't think there's something distinct like there's distinct about oh hey look at that uh, snake bracelet. I want to touch it or your phone, which is essentially going hey Dan, hey Dan. <laughs> Hey, Dan. <laughs> like, it feels, see a picture of a snake? Yeah, like it, feels, <laughs> it does feel like a little bit more pernicious or at least uh, persistent. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. All right. right. Maybe uh, um, if you've got any thoughts on that, hit up the old Life from the Path. Bob Eisenhower complaint line, 515-517-0085. Call or text. And uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, I don't know. Do you like, I mean, don't go on like an epic rant about phones in general. We'll, Mike, we'll have Mike back in. Uh, Mike can come in and do that. Uh, but I, but you know, as you think about it within the context of, uh, gatherings, church gatherings or whatever, like, are they help or harming more than they're helping? Or, uh, if it, would you agree with Dan to say, look, if it's not a phone, it's, uh, it's something else. It's a You're jar of peanut butter or a snake bracelet. Yeah. These are so, oh, those just seems like some like out there examples, Dan, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> that's true. You did say anything could be a distraction. Yeah. It could that be a jar of peanut butter or it could be a bracelet of a snake. <laughs> I mean, we all know it's really the little blue haired gal three rows up to the left that's stinging off key really loud. I mean, that point. does it too. That is also a distraction. Amazing <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ethel. <laughs> and now Ethel will also balance her checkbook. Like she'll <laughs> she'll take the time. She takes care of it. Yeah. yeah. So Dan's not wrong. Redeeming qualities. The but, child running back and forth in a pew. Yeah, that's uh, true. But yeah, I whatever you, the stuff. Yeah. I, I'm gonna come out at Dan's church here next Sunday. If there's 50 people with jars of peanut butter in your pews, Dan. <laughs> I'm going to repent completely. I'll that do, can't happen. We don't have like, pews. This makes plenty of sense. <laughs> yes. This is a much more prevalent problem you know, than I realized. Contextually, it's I, everywhere. I know where Dan's coming from. That's my new book. <laughs> All right. Put a lid on the peanut butter. Oh, let's see. All right. You're listening to Live from Darn the Darn Skippy.
hey, there was uh, – I think Boov and I were talking about this, uh, I think, yesterday. But uh, one of the guys who wrote Despacito – was yeah, it? Daddy Yankee. Daddy Yankee. He came to he came to know the Lord. He came to Jesus. Dad, are you familiar with the song Despacito? Uh, maybe if I it, heard it, it means can you slowly. It? Yeah, uh, but Booba, give us a. There's us a few no, bars. there's nothing that is going to get me <laughs> to sing Despacito on this radio program. <laughs> Man, I would do it. I got it's five dollars. I don't know the words past Despacito. <laughs> something, 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 burrito. So, so drink a nice cold mojito. Yeah. Okay, if you didn't get it by that, Dan, you're not gonna get yeah, it. Yeah, that was that was spot <laughs> on. All I could think about was peanut butter. I can, <laughs> I can name that tune in fifty ja, mispronounced uh, lyrics. Skip it. <laughs> so give me four more minutes. Anyway, uh give I, me a bag it, of cool ranch to read. It was a uh, I will say that uh uh if you translated the lyrics, you would not generally let your children no. sing or enjoy this tune no <laughs> and uh so anyway he uh he has come to the to know the lord and he says i'm not doing i'm giving up the rapping and uh you should place your faith in jesus and uh i can't keep doing this because even though it's bringing me all the worldly stuff uh why would i want to uh, give gain the whole world and forfeit my soul that's a he that was his quote at his concert and nice. then he's uh he's done wow so we got rob schneider coming to catholicism yep and we've got uh daddy yankee yep Hitting up our side. Now, Justin Bieber was involved in the uh, Despacito, and so it feels like... The American like, version, yeah. Yeah, maybe he's been uh, witnessing to the Papa Yankee. Papa Yankee? <laughs> Why'd you make it creepier? <laughs> how do you say Like, that? why? It's Daddy Yankee. Like, it's not how I say it. It's his name. I feel weird about it. It's like saying, your name's Ben. How do you say that? <laughs> oh, it's Ben. <laughs> oh, no, I like that. You should, you should, you should do that. I like the way you do it. <laughs> ben. Yeah, it's Daddy and Papa Yankee. That's okay. creepy. Daddy uh, Yankee. Heading the other direction, uh, Lil Nas X, uh, who drew that. Remember, what? we talked about him in 2021. He created the Satan shoes. Oh, yeah. And uh, he has recently created announced that he shoes. is uh, entering the Christian era of his music career. But oh, he says gosh. it will not impact his sexuality. Uh, he's a he's a, a gay fella. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, He's also saying era because of Taylor Swift. Yeah. Uh, so said, I don't believe anything about it, but I think I can make some cash. Yeah, Little Nas X. I feel like throughout their career, his career, he's he's changed genres and and like groups of people that he is is pandering to. Essentially, the rap community. There's a country aspect of the community. Then came out as 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 gay, and then now is in his Christian era. Like it's basically, it just it feels commercial. Like, it just feels like, well, this is the next group I'm going to identify with so that I can try and get them to believe or buy my albums. Or is that like the old my, country stars who used to always have a gospel album as maybe, well? Maybe, yeah. I don't know. It just I always thought, huh? I just feel like <laughs> out, out of all the artists that have just reinvented themselves so many times, Little Nas X is now on like four yeah. in a career that's less years than that. Yeah, this is not like, I, the, I, the only reason I brought this up, one, is it's an interesting counterbalance to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to Father Papa Yankee. Yankee. And uh, secondly, it um, like it, like you got to be cautious here. The man is mocking you. Yes, the man is mocking God. As a matter of fact, uh, I, are you familiar with the actor Tyrese Gibson? Yeah. What was he in? Tyrese Gibson was uh, Fast and Furious. Wasn't okay. He? Uh, so he was he got on the old uh, Insta and he says, "Y'all gonna learn to stop playing with God. God is not to be played with. From shoes with devil signs and devil's blood in the soul." We can uh, we can all change. I get it, but I feel a way about people making a mockery about Jesus. Uh, do you live your life? Do what makes you happy. But y'all better stop playing with Jesus out here. <laughs> He's not wrong. No, He's not wrong. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I, I thought it was uh, it's just interesting. Like just because just because like uh, he's either he's trying to get your money. Don't right. be stupid. And, Which is yeah. Uh, and we're not we're not like um, again. We, we talked about this before. Like at the at the mild assumption like. Uh, presumption that someone might have come to jesus we're like finally we we got him <laughs> mel gibson is ours one more for the team yeah whatever it is uh like calm down this is not your personal victory the god's the like, god's kingdom is either moving or being like not moving that's in this particular man it's a real thing yeah but like um uh, because a lot of times even our reaction to that is not like angels celebrate in heaven it's more like a i don't know it's not healthy a lot yeah. of the ways i've seen that so anyway don't uh, don't rush out and buy yeah. the Lil Nas X album, and and realize that the the kingdom of heaven isn't more excited because it's a celebrity. 
Yes, like right. that's that, that's something to keep in mind too. Just because you recognize the name doesn't mean that it's a a a, a, a way to your soul that just found its way into the kingdom. The angels like, celebrate a little harder. It's like, wait a minute, Elvis is one of ours now. That's awesome. It's like, yeah, no. Well, it more Elvis Duran is one of ours now. Awesome. No, that's not that's not a thing. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, anyway, you're listening live from the path, uh, Buba. Let's let's hit your. So the question was around. Judas and John. Yeah, I just uh, so reading through and this goes back to the same conversation or uh, uh, the similar conversation we had last week where I had kind of uh, uh, slammed through the Gospels, if you will, just getting my normal uh, daily reading done. And I was reading five chapters a day. So I was I mean, I was swimming through them. And by the time I got to John, there was just such a difference in that Gospel versus the others. And very specifically, there's uh, there's just a. Uh, I don't want to say like a heavier narrative that's placed on Judas, because obviously all the narratives of Judas are heavy, but like it just feels aggressive more than the other Gospels against Judas, like snide comments, maybe that aren't snide. I'm just reading them weirdly of like uh, talking about obviously we recognize that Judas was the was the 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 catalyst, at least earthly catalyst of the of the uh, the traitor situation uh, and Jesus being betrayed, excuse me, but like. I don't know. It just felt odd as I was reading through that. Like, was there something that I'm missing culturally where like John being written so many years later that like it was just an accepted thing that there was a lot of animosity towards Judas at that time that would have made its way into his gospel? Uh, Was there more context that he had having been later on? Like we talked about like 40 years past some of the other gospels that were written. Like, where is this coming from that this just seems to be a different and heavier and more like. Uh, I don't know, aggressive vibe versus Judas by John than the other Gospels. Yeah, I, I think it does relate to some of what you said. I Again, when John is writing significantly later than everybody else, mm-hmm. he continues to see the impact um, of the progression of the Gospel throughout the world. Um, and like, I'd probably, and he's had a lot of time to, I mean, he was close, right? He was yeah, close, right. super close to Jesus. Um feels it's it actually it's interesting now that i'm saying it out loud and i'm hearing myself talk about it is that like to a certain extent you'd feel like john would start coming to conclusions like well it, it did have to happen that's what i was thinking exactly <laughs> you have a deep, you're saying that right yeah, you like have it, a deeper appreciation yeah. exactly like, you would make sense all happening yeah if yeah. you've been if you've been so far removed from it you've seen the the true ripple effects of of what happened with the crucifixion yeah. and like where that went. I mean, he's been he's been privy and witness to so many things yeah. and like a change and shift in the following of the way and like how it's is permeated through the area. And like, even though most of the leaders were murdered in gruesome ways, it's just it is still catching fire yeah. and still going. And yet you've got this weird Jude or this this John Judas relationship where he's like. I, it's it's wrong to say mean, but like it seems kind of mean. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's going like he calls him a son son of perdition. Yep. Um, when it comes up to uh, like you, you you get a sense for Judas maybe up to nefarious stuff, but it's John who goes. He was stealing from the purse. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, yeah. he's very specific. Right. He's yes. not impressed for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he and it was he specifically was at the not selling the uh, the bottle of uh, of incense yeah. Yeah. or whatever it was uh, the the uh, anointing oil. Yeah. He was like. Uh, you should have sold that, and we could have had more money. But Judas would have been, would have taken it for himself because he was the one who was actually in control of the coffers. Yeah. It's like, why is that necessary other than to build this adversarial thing with Judas from the start? I think I think that uh, just a thought. I mean, right? Yeah. Maybe it's more for the readers to understand this is who I'm talking about. It's it's the bad guy. It's the bad Judas. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, because he John John was better. I mean, John John's better than that. As far as it being a personal dig, right? You, you know, I, I just don't see that being the case. I think it, I could see him feeling rejected, like during the three days of the tomb. But about the second the resurrection, he's like, "Oh, thank you, Judas," because this wouldn't have happened. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, you know. I mean, uh, and that's just my you know random now, thoughts. On okay. It. Although Jesus will say, like, uh, is isn't it isn't it where he goes, like, woe to you through who this has been, to? like, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so there there is still a sense for, like, I, I don't know, the, the way of which God is accomplishing it. Like, you could you could say, well, I mean, God did it. So, I mean, right. I, why do we even f- hold Judas accountable? Yeah. Like, so, like, and, and I and I've heard like discussions around that lens, hmm. um, trying to figure out to, to what sense is Judas culpable. I, I actually don't think that's even a necessary argument to the extent that that like we, we get a sense for God knows it's going to happen. Right. So like he Jesus is in situations 
and doing things in such a way that like this is the outcome without otherwise forcing Judas's hand in the matter. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced that I have to go like God made me do it. Right with with Judas, um, but I, I I will I do think I don't know I it does feel like John is I I don't know if it's outside of the realm for him to be holding on to some level of irritation about it. That's right. Yes, and I that's what I was trying to figure out. I was like, is there something that I'm missing here that like whether it was a cultural thing or whether it was a relational thing that like specifically John had a stressed relationship with Judas or like because it's been so long since it happened that like he yeah. knows he knows the ripples of this stuff so like he can speak uh, on authority at the fact that like Judas was this kind of dude this whole way. But then I've also heard an interesting it's not so much of, of a misunderstanding for me uh, by in the Gospel of John, but like I've also heard uh, that like one of the reasons that Judas would have even betrayed Jesus was because he was trying to force his hand. Like that's mm-hmm. that's one of the narratives that I've always been told. I think that's true. Uh, yeah. Of like Judas was was expecting a coming king, like like the other Jews in the situation were expecting a king to essentially rebring the golden age of Israel, right? Solomon time, and like. The, he's just not seeing that. And so, like, why wouldn't he set up an adversarial situation in which Jesus would have to be forced hand to, like, go, no, 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 you're not taking me. You're not you're not going to bring me into custody like this is my kingdom now. And then, you know, this is yeah, Sparta style, arms, kick somebody in the chest. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like and if that's so, that seems to be a very different narrative than what John is 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 deriving here. Because like he's going all the way back to going, Judas has been this rough dude this whole time. Oh, it no. wasn't just that. I, I think that is true. I, I like obviously I accepted his truth. John tells me that he is a thief. Um, but like right. I, I, I actually don't know that those are exclusive in any way. He can be a thief and then also be someone who's willing yeah. to try to 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 the th- think of it this way. He's doing the exact same. What what Judas is guilty of is the thing that Satan tempts Jesus on yes. in Matthew chapter four. It's the thing where he tells like Peter to get behind me, Satan, yep. which is there's a way to accomplish this. The thing that I want out of the Messiah, this is what's going to happen. Right. And this is the way of which it should happen. Yep. And like the the, the betrayal at the Last Supper, like it's it's at the doorstep. So, yeah. So and so Jesus, no, like he's telling that this is exactly what's going to happen, and Judas is like, this has to be stopped. That like this mm. is going to yeah. thwart the way of which this is supposed to go. And I, so I do think that narrative actually yeah. makes the most sense for me. That does make sense. Um, which which means though. That like, um, you, you know, John, in fact, John, is it John that describes and said Satan enters him? Yes. Right. So, again, that's not a surprise. If you look at the way that the scriptural narrative says it is Satan who is behind trying way any ways in which tries to get Jesus to be a different king than what he was sent to be. Yeah. Right. Right. And so that oh, that, that, yeah. all, that all actually still makes sense to me. He is still responsible for that. He mm-hmm. like where Peter backs off after Jesus rebukes him. He doesn't like it. Right. But he doesn't try to to subvert Jesus. Uh, Judas continues to persist. And so he, I, he is responsible. He's liable for that. Okay. That makes sense. I can accept that. That's, that's a different way than I've heard it before. And so, so it, to, to flip it here and not to go to a, you know, five-year-old question here, but I, I am going to, um, Judas having been the, the initiator of this Jesus betrayal, but then that led to the crucifixion, right? Like there, there are sides of this story that you would accept that like, there was a certain way this had to happen, right? And like there were, I mean, even Jesus talks about the fact that he's like, if this cup can pass over me, great. But like, I'm, I'm here to take it no matter what. Like, if this is the way that you want to do it, Lord, I will. Right? But like, is Judas exempt or the only person that's exempt from like the concept of being forgiven by God? Like, I don't, I, and that that's a, that's a bad way to ask that question. Well, there was obviously some regret. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Agreed. So who knows what happened between him and God in yeah. those moments? Mm, okay. You yeah. Know? I guess I mean, like, I don't want to ask the kindergarten question of is, is, is Judas yeah. in heaven? Is he in thing, heaven? Right. Like, cause I, yeah. frankly, I don't care. Like I, I don't care that much Yeah. from the perspective of like, I'm not the one who would call the balls and strikes on that as Mike would say. Right, right, right. But like, I'm just, I'm interested from the, cause it, it, the, and it, 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 I'm remembering now that like, there's some verbiage in John that I'll have to find. I can't find right this second, but I should have beforehand, but there's some verbiage that makes it seem like, Judas was was destined to be this this one that would be yeah. adversarial to Jesus. And like he, maybe I read too much into that to be like did if God set a pl- or allowed a plant whatever you right. want to call it yeah. Yeah. for Judas to be adversarial enough to have like betrayed Jesus so that he is then taken into custody that leads to his murder 
and execution. But then where do you where, where do you stop? Where do you draw the line? Is what about the soldiers? Exactly who right. The nails yeah, and that's and, what I'm thinking. Too, and we know the heart of Jesus when he looked down and said, "Father, forgive yes, them." They don't, right, they don't exactly. know what they're doing. Right. Judas didn't okay. know what he's doing either. And, I'm not defending him either, but but no, and I, I can see that. him in heaven. Yep, and I can see him not. But that we'll let God worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I guess it just it seems to be like a setup by John of like uh, almost as though and like this was destined to happen, and he he had to do it this way. And like, did God destine someone to sin against him so that he could redeem the world through his son? Like. What that seems, I mean, what? yeah, uh, right. It just, it's, 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 it's a leaky boat for me. Not, not to say that it shakes my faith or anything like that. It's just an interesting thought process to go. God accomplishes his, his, his goals and his plans and his will. However, he sees fit. I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe that God is just and good. There's nothing in me that's shaken on that. But like, it's just an odd thing to think that like God has used humans it for generations and centuries for his good and to continue to move things. Broken people uh, uh, doing the will of Yahweh uh, is the whole story of all 66 books of the Bible, right? But, like, did God d- set up a destiny or a will or, or a plan or something for someone to just be flat out against him? Well, yeah, I mean, do, do, is that not at least in some ways applicable to Nebuchadnezzar? Mm. Yeah. I mean, he's not a worshiper of Yahweh when, right. <laughs> when he... Facilitates the exile. Um, I, I'm, Raya, I'm actually right? open. I, I'm open to, to either. Too. I've heard to, like multiple explanations. Depends on uh, where you fall on free will. Nah. I, if if God, I, I think um, it is totally acceptable to me to believe that um, God knew that this is what humans would do. Yep. And so Jesus is born where he's born for the reasons in which he's born. Yep. Dealing with the people that he's born, you know, around and whatever, mm-hmm. to, because he knew this was the outcome. I mean, it, it requires a lot of chess moves, but like, who right. could do it better? Like right. Yahweh obviously is capable of it. It also it doesn't bother me one bit to to say uh, God subverted someone's free will. It's generally what I'm praying for. Almost <laughs> always when I'm praying, I'm saying God, mm-hmm. like take this, away their free will. Right, this person their, right? is going to do this, and so I want you to change oh, it. I want you to keep the man from hitting the lady. I want you to supernaturally kick the car off the road so it doesn't hit the lamppost. Yeah, I'm I'm asking for this kind of stuff all the time. Um. If I was praying, if I was asking another human to do it, this would be highly suspicious and dangerous to me. Uh, but like, if God cannot be trusted to subvert human free will to accomplish things um, that we have that that He wants accomplished in the world, then I, you know, I don't know what I'm trusting in anyway. So I actually, I actually do not have a problem with um, an explanation that said He He set Judas up for this. Um, as long as he can be trusted and so not like, well, Judas would have been fine, a faithful follower of Yahweh, except for God <laughs> turned his heart to stone. Right. Like, right. I, yeah, I, I wouldn't. Bu- I'm not heart buying that. Pharaoh's heart. But he yeah. did use it for he did use it for good, which is the thing that James tells us he's going to do. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm OK with that. I don't have any I don't have any theological problem with that. And you can't help but wonder maybe some of the tone that you talked about earlier of of how John treats refers to Judas. Yeah, um, it's almost like the the husband who's speaking about his ex-wife. Who, who at one time they had a great relationship yep. and then things fell apart and then they got divorced. Now it's 15 years later and he's like, eh, you know, you know, all the things he said, it's yeah. like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, that just kind of came to my mind. I don't know. If okay. It's, you know, yeah. I, I, th- I don't anything. think it's beyond the, beyond the pale for John to just like to be irritated. It, it was yeah. a it was close friend. Yeah, Judas. Like, especially if he was, if you think about it, he's not at the major of, he's not at like the, he's not the three that are showing up to like the transfiguration and stuff like that. But like, if he's dealing with the money, dude's around all the time. Right. Uh, and would have traveled with him or whatever. So, like, to feel betrayed by a friend. I mean, he's the art. Uh, he's the uh, Paul Simon to the uh, Judas's art Garfunkel. Okay. They just, it's not feeling right anymore. They were close. Now they're not close. Okay. okay. I can accept that. Okay. And that's a, it, it made me think of, uh, of God hardening the heart of Pharaoh. Like, it says specifically, like, God had commanded Moses to go and, like, and have him tell him. Like, one, tell Pharaoh who I am and that I am sent you, and then tell my people that I am sent you and, and you're coming and like. But, like, it says specifically that God hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and Pharaoh did not change his ways or let his people go. And, the, the, I mean, the plagues continued to happen, but, like, there is, a, there is a perspective. Like, God hardened his heart so that he would not change those ways. Like, is that is that God exercising his will against the free will of a human? I would think so. Uh, it's po- I think it's possible. Hmm. Okay. I think it's. I think there's 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 ways to read that where I'm God, sure God is just using 
um, Pharaoh, the hardness of Pharaoh's heart. Um, and it's not like an active verb that I'm reading into in my translation. Yes. I, but, he, but again, here's what I would say. I, you should give up having a problem with it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Right. I had no issue with that. I, I struck like I did. I, I did struggle with it because like I thought if, 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 if humans do not have complete like freedom and choice, uh, then it's not love. God, then God is, you, you know, puppeting people around and he's puppeting some people to uh, eternal separation from him, which is frankly would be the same thing. Why didn't I just buy into he puppets all the things like if I'm going to buy that, what keeps me from believing that? Right. But like I don't that isn't. It just isn't the way that the narrative reads to me. I think it it appears that God, out of love, has given choice, and that predominantly that is the experience of human beings. Otherwise, again, like the New Testament is wasted. Mm-hmm. Paul's completely yeah. wasted. Right? right? Why is he say, "Hey, you need to change this. You should act this way." Like, what do you mean? I don't have any choice to do anything. What's? Why are we even talking about this? Right. So, like, I think most of the instruction in the New Testament is wasted if we don't if we aren't people of choice. However, um. If he is not a complete, if he's not, if we're not deists, if we believe that he is active into the world, that in, in any mm-hmm. action God's t- God takes has to be in some way or another a violation of somebody's free will. Right. Miracles are a violation of, of something, right? Yeah. Your kid should have died. The natural progression, some somebody should have died. Protection, uh, unnatural protection, peace where it doesn't belong. These are all things of which, yeah. like, subvert some either natural process or some human choice. And the only reason I can trust that that's okay is because I trust that it's God and he's mm. good. And so, and if we can't trust that he's God and he's good, then I don't know who we're worshiping. Right. It throws everything out. Yeah. And so like, I get it. It's not, it's not a clean, I, I think it, it causes trouble for people because they're like, they want a very clean theology. Either God touches nothing or he touches everything. Mm. I just, it's just not that easy. I don't think that it is more gray than that. And I don't have any reason not to be okay with it. The problem of putting God in a box is he does what he wants. It's correct. <laughs> Yes. Right. Our boxes can't. Lord, can. we have two boxes. I don't know why you won't stay in them. Yeah. 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 So okay. and, and some of that, I guess, as an encouragement, though, when you're a lot of times our faith is tried when we hit something like that, the yeah. faith, like you're good. And then you and then when you hear that God did something you're like, ah, or when um, there's the story of where he uh, someone sent to, an angel is sent to deceive somebody. I don't know who I'm thinking of. It's in I think it's, I think it's Daniel. Um. Who wants to go? And someday just like, I'll do it. <laughs> like, I'll deceive him. And you're like, well, I don't know. This seems like morally ambiguous. Uh, I've, but here's the thing. Uh, all of it hinges down to like, if, if the resurrection is true, if Jesus rose from the dead mm-hmm. and then, it, then I can contextually start to take capture in and say the rest of these narratives were true. Then there has to be a realm of which this is fine. And God yeah. can be trusted for even deceit. Which means we should stop. You know, the classic argument is like uh, if the if the SS showed up at your door, if you were Anne Frank, would you rat people out because you can't tell a lie? God was willing to accomplish his his righteous means by going, yeah, I, let's deceive this evil king. And uh, and then that'll get us the way we want to go. And so, like, again, sometimes we're just super tied up like like um, it's not that God isn't clear in places. I'm just saying we're we're, we're thinking too narrow. Mm-hmm. Like right. we're, we're we're just getting tied too far down. We do that because that's where we're comfortable. I would much. Boo and I were talking this before the show started. I, I do be honest. I'd be real thankful if God just wrote out the whole thing I was supposed to do today, <laughs> and I just had to go. Okay, got it. Nailed right. it. Check box. Check. I, yep. <laughs> this freedom thing is causing me yeah. consternation. I'm not good at it, <laughs> but uh, I think we do have it. And so I think like sometimes in the presence of what we believe to be moral ambiguity, the first question is: Is it from God, and is God good? If those two things are true. Um, then I start to reshape how I can take in the world. And, and to Dan's point, uh, d- try not to believe that you've come up with the proper boxes to stick God in. God mm-hmm. will do as he pleases. Yep. Okay. You, you're listening to Life from the Path. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's do this. Let's, let's, do a, let's do a quiz. Yes. Okay. I was going to look for a Christmas quiz. They have a Jesus's birth. You want to try that one? Sure. Let's, yeah. see how, let's see how we do. And if, it's, if we breeze right through it, maybe we'll do another one that seems a little bit harder. Uh, here we go. Number one, who is the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary? Jacob, Eliezer, Azor, or Jeconias? I think it's Jacob. Jacob. Jacob, father of Joseph. Totally forgot. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. If it's not Abimelech, Dan doesn't know. <laughs> Number two, which angel appeared to Mary? Gabriel. Gabriel. Gabriel, the angel of the Lord, Michael, or Gideon? Gabriel. Okay, we're going to go with Gabriel. Three, who was promised that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ? Zacharias, Joseph, Simeon, John the Baptist. Simeon. Yeah, I'll go for Simeon. Okay. Everybody's in with Simeon. Uh, number four, who was the king of Judea at the time of the birth of Jesus? 
Herod, Pilate, Caesar, Barnabas. Herod. Herod. Yep. Herod's correct. Number five. I'm just assuming. I'm going to say that. Five. Where was Jesus born? Nazareth, Bethlehem, Jerusalem, Egypt. Bethlehem. 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 Good. We're going to rock this one. That's where all the nope. other lambs were. Number six. How did the shepherds who visited baby Jesus? He capitalized baby. That was, doesn't seem necessary. <laughs> Maybe they called him baby like sometimes. They, like I'm adult. Baby. Capital A adult Ben. Daddy Yankee. Uh, baby <laughs> Jesus. All right. Well, uh, how did the shepherds who visited baby Jesus know where to find him? Uh, one, they were told in the dream. Two, an angel of the Lord told them. Three, they read it in the scrolls. Four, a messenger from the east informed them. Angel. Yep. Angel of the Lord agreed. Number seven, how did uh, the wise men who visited baby Jesus know where to find him? Star. Followed a star in the east. Eight, which was not a gift the wise men brought to Jesus. Myrrh, frankincense, silver, and gold. Silver. All right. Silver and gold. Sorry. I won't come back to this. I don't show. know why you wouldn't do Despacito. <laughs> <laughs> I almost did it again. No. With, with those dulcet tones, you oh, should have humored everyone. No. Number nine, to escape from the king, the angel of the Lord told Jesus' family to leave and go where? Egypt. Syria, Egypt, Bethlehem, or Palestine? Bethlehem. Yep, Egypt. Bethlehem, Egypt. Good. Ten, where was Jesus raised after they returned? Bethlehem, Egypt, Syria, Nazareth. Nazareth. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see what we did here. Nazareth. We're just going to scroll down to the bottom. Save us. Okay, we got. We nailed it. Ooh, 100%. The quiz has been taken 127,000 times, <sighs> and the average score for this quiz is 83%. Hey, that's higher than normal. Yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm guessing that's like, how many questions are there here? Ten. I bet people are missing number one. They're they're uh, forgetting the name of Joseph's father because that's yeah. a bit obscure. Okay, right. you want to hit another one? Okay, yep. I'll be back. Okay, uh, let's see here. Let's do ooh Bible General. Bible General. Uh, oh, okay. Hold on. Oh no. Oh, let's do let's do the early church. Oh gosh. Okay. And we can choose. Holy cats! Let, I'm going to choose the one where the average score is the lowest. Oh no. Okay. And it is. Paul's shipwreck. <laughs> okay. Oh boy, twelve oh, questions. Gosh. Okay, twelve it, questions. Oh, this has been a while. I'm not. I'm not feeling good, Boo. Uh, neither am I. I'm Let's feeling see good about this. We we'll just beat the average. <laughs> when it was decided that they were to sail for Italy, they transferred Paul and some other prisoners to a centurion of the Augustan cohort. What was his name? Publius, Julius, Cleophas, Gyrus. I think Cleophas. Yeah, I was. Uh, that's actually my gut too. Although, which is interesting because that's the name of uh, the Reverend in the first Blues Brothers movie. <laughs> Reverend, Cle- uh, the guy Reverend who's, Cleophas, the guy who's played by uh, uh, James Brown. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So I. <laughs> we're oh gonna, God. We're, we're, go we're with, either good at this or we remember the Blues Brothers. <laughs> we're gonna go with him for good luck. Cleophas. Okay. All right. Two. Paul advised him that the trip would be one easy, as God has promised that He will spare us. Two dangerous. Three, with danger and much heavy loss of the cargo. Or four, with danger and much heavy loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also our lives. Four. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's right. Four. Yep. Where was this crew planning to spend the winter? Uh, oh, gosh. Phoenice, probably Phoenice, uh, La Sea, uh, Salmon, or Fair Havens? I think two. La Sea? Yeah. Do you think differently? Mm. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I would just be guessing. Let's go I with two. Think, I think two. Yeah, yeah. Number four. After they had lowered the sea anchor, what did they do on the next day? One, they began to throw the cargo overboard. Two, they began to load up the raft. Three, they began to take pieces of the, off the ship to use for rafts. Four, they began to cast lots to see who was on the ship that was bringing this misfortune to them. <laughs> I think it's I think it's the throw the car, cargo overboard. Yeah, cargo was the second move. Okay. Number five. Have you read this recently, Buva? Yeah, I read Acts like uh, three weeks, uh, two and a half weeks ago. Okay, okay. Number five. What had they not seen for many days that made them abandon hope of being saved? Uh, one birds, two the sun of the stars, three land, four other ships. Oh gosh, uh, it wasn't land, and it wasn't other ships. I don't think. So it's either gonna be birds or the sun of the sun of the stars. I think it was sun of the stars because they were in storms. Okay, let's try it. Six. Because that was how they were navigating. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, although, I, yeah, they were anchored. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But number six. Paul was confident to tell the men that they would be saved because an angel told him that it would be so. Two, he could see the sky clearing from the west. Three, he could see land. Four, he felt that he should try to be an encouragement to them. 
I, I'm laughing, but I four is hitting me right. But I don't think that's right. Uh, do you read the options again. Uh, Angel told him that it would be so. No. Uh, he could see the sky clearing from the west. Maybe three. He could see land. No. Four. Know. He should try to be an encouragement. I think two or four. If you want to make the call, you can. Look, so if we said uh, or if the, it's different. the sky clearing would align with five, which means they were unhopeful because the sun they couldn't see the sun of the stars. Yeah, let's get, okay, let's do that. So if we're, we're going down, if both of them we're, are wrong. No, we're doubling down. Okay. okay. Number, number seven, how many days were the men without food? Three, seven, 14, 21. Without food, I think was 14. Okay, let's go 14. Number eight. What did Paul do? Dan, we need some, we're in some rough shape here. Gosh, yeah. Okay, so we chose uh, a quiz from the early church category. The quiz was about Paul's shipwreck. Oh, yeah. uh, Very this, specifically. This was the worst performing one. Average <laughs> score is 51%. Oh, boy. Okay, so we're going to try. I'm going to run these through you real quick, Dan. One, when it was decided they were to sail for Italy, they transferred Paul and some other prisoners to a centurion of the Augustan court. What was his name? We said Cleophas. Other options were Publius, Julius, or Jairus. Yeah, yeah, I had no idea. Okay, good. Uh, two, Paul advised him that the trip would be, we said, with danger and much heavy loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also our lives. Uh, does that sound right? Uh-huh. Okay, good. Number three, where this crew planning to spend the winter? Um, uh, Fenice, maybe? Fenice? Uh, Lasea? Salmon? Or Fair Havens? Boy. I don't, yeah, I don't recall. Okay, good. Number four, yeah. after they lowered the sea anchor, what did they do the next day? We said they started to throw the cargo overboard. Other options were load the life raft, take pieces of the ship and use for rafts, or cast lots. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay, let's hope so. It's hard not to confuse it with Jonah. That's right. what I'm saying. That's a- I think that fourth one intentionally did that. Yeah. Number five, uh, what, what had they not seen for many days that made them abandon hope of being saved? Uh, migratory birds, son of the stars, land, or other ships? We said son of the stars. Yeah. Under the presumption that it was uh, like there was just a big storm. And sure. then double yeah. down the next answer. Yeah. Uh, so number six, <laughs> Paul was confident to tell the men that they would be saved because one, an angel said it would be. Two, he could see the sky clearing from the west. Three, he could see land. Or four, he felt he just wanted to be an encouragement to them. <laughs> angel. <clears throat> okay, Dan says angel. I'm fine. I'm I'm fine switching. How, to you feel then. pretty good about that, Dan? I feel good about it, but okay. that doesn't, you know. <laughs> That's right. We're just going off of guts and glory here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Seven. How many days were the men without food? Three, seven, 14, or 21? We said 14. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. It was a, it was a way, like, it was a lot of days. That Seems I, like it. If I remember correctly. Okay. All right. We're back out. Number eight. What did Paul do to try to encourage the men to eat? One, nothing. Two, he just kept reminding them of what the angel had said. Three, he just reminded them, reminded them of God's goodness to their ancestors. Four, he took bread, thank God, broke it, began to eat. It was four. He took the bread, yep. broke it? Yep. Hmm. Because I'll, I'll he, yeah. he had abstained from eating as well, and, but then something switched to where he was then able to eat, and so he was telling them that he could eat by doing it himself. Okay. Number nine, how many people were on the ship? One, we're not told. Two, 153. Uh, three, 276. Or four, 312. I don't think we know. I don't think I think we're not told. Okay. That seems like an oddly specific thing to <laughs> be in that section. Oh man. Three more questions. I'm not feeling good. No. I'm not feeling not. good, Boba. Ten. What happened to the anchors that they cast off? One, they floated. Two, they put markers on them so they could retrieve them later. Three, as one fell, it struck the captain and he died. Or four, they were left in the sea. They were left in the sea. I suppose they were left in the sea. <laughs> I feel like I would remember either of the other three answers. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Remember that time that they cast out the anchor and it accidentally killed the captain? Yeah, yeah that was awkward. And what was he doing? Why was, Why he, was the- he anywhere near these cast out <laughs> anchors? Yeah. Okay, let's hope it's that one. Number 11. Guys, what did- don't worry, I'm just going to the bath. <laughs> he was swimming. What did the centurion order the men who could swim to do? One, jump over the side and see if they could find the anchors that had been cast off. Two, each one to swim beside a non-swimmer to help him. Three, not to leave the ship until they were sure that the non-swimmers were tied to the life rafts. Or four, jump overboard first and make for the land. I think three. Don't leave the ship until the non-swimmers were tied to the life rafts? I think it was four. And Dan says, jump overboard first and make for the land. I'm cool moving to four then. Were they worried about the the prisoners getting away? Yes, they were. Because they were like, we can't abandon everybody and let these guys go. That was the centurion specific. So that would vote for number three. Oh, okay. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll see. I don't remember them worried about the non-swimmers, but you know. Well, not non-swimmers. It was prisoners. But yeah, you're, say, you're saying that because the verbiage in the question is yeah. non-swimmers. Yeah. All right. But they were worried about the prisoners. Yeah. Yeah. 
What was the name of the island that the ship landed on? Uh, Cilicia, um, Melita, Crete, or Pamphylia? I think it was Crete. Isn't it Crete? Okay. We feel good about Crete. Yeah. Is it Crete? Oh, oh boy. Oh, boy. Oh I, see, oh, I see red on the page. Number one. When it was decided that they were to sail for Italy, they transferred Paul and some other prisoners to a centurion of the Augustan cohort. What was his name? We said, Re- right, Reverend Cleophas. That is incorrect. The answer is Julius. Hmm. What? Julius. Okay. All right. Like, remember the Titans. Question two. <laughs> Paul advised them that the trip would be, we said, with danger and much heavy loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also our lives. That was correct. Uh, where was the ship planning to spend the winter? We said La Sea. That answer is incorrect. The correct answer is Fenice. It's because you kept saying it weird. Is, you don't think it's La Sea? No, it's because you kept saying the correct answer weird. Fenice. Fenice. The question is four. Is it F-I-N-E-C-E? No, no. P-H-E-N-I-C-E. Oh, okay. Uh, after they lowered the sea anchor, what did they do the next day? We said they began to throw the cargo overboard. That is correct. What had they not seen for many days that made them abandon hope of being saved? We said the sun of the stars. That is correct. Nice. Paul was confident to tell the men that they would be saved because Dan had us change it to an angel had told him that would be so. And that is correct. Nice job. Number seven. How many days were the men without food? We said 14. That is correct. Question eight. Why did what did Paul do to try to encourage the men to eat? He said he took bread. Thank God and broke it and began to eat. And that is correct. Oof. Question nine, how many people were on the ship? We claim to not know because it wasn't told. That is incorrect. It was very explicitly 276. (laughs) Question 10, what happened to the anchors that they cast off? We said they left them, and that is correct. Uh, What did the centurion order the man who could swim to do? We said not to leave the ship until they were sure that the non-swimmers were tied to the life rafts. That is incorrect. Dan's proposed answer, jump overboard first and make for land, was the correct answer. Dang it. We should have gone with yours, Dan. I'm sorry. Question 12. What was the name of the island that the ship landed on? We all all very confidently said Crete. Oh, no. That is incorrect. (laughs) The correct answer is um, Mylita. Oh, yeah. Dang. How'd we do? We answered 7 out of 12 questions correctly for a score of 59%, which (laughs) beats the average score of 51 but still is a failing grade at any school in the country. You need to Barely. study. Barely failing. Yep. When's yep. the last time I read that one? Second I mean, F plus. You know? Dan, I know it was it. two weeks ago for me. Oh. <laughs> we were talking about that while you're gone. I read that two weeks ago. Yeah. Yep. Rough times. Yeah, that is rough. All right. Anyway, uh, if you want to uh, hear more quizzes, if you go to our, our YouTube channel and just do a search for quiz or life from the path dot org and search uh, quiz in the old box, it'll come up with, uh, I don't know, times we've taken a quiz. Now, here's the thing. You're going to have to suffer through an hour and a half, roughly, of a show to hear us doing the quiz. But uh, these are your own life choices. You can also, if you search for a Secular or Solomon, you can uh, hear us play uh, the, the classic Secular Solomon game. Dang, which I, we should do one of those. I do hear that uh, Secular Solomon will be coming out with a um, uh, with either a digital or a uh, playing card version in uh, 2024. <laughs> that's awesome. That uh, That's uh, it's on the docket for next year, so we'll on see the how Life, life the Path app? Yeah, there we go. It's uh, all the promises that Ben wanted to keep. Uh, things are getting pricey is the problem. Hey, speaking of which, let's say you don't want to buy from the Live from the Past store. That's totally fine. There is a donate button up on the old Live from the Path website. Uh, we don't do advertisers, uh, but that's probably because no one would agree to it. So it's it's not like we're benevolent. We just I can't convince anybody to do it. But <laughs> let's say out of sympathy, you want to throw us some cash because like it does cost money to host the stuff here and uh, just random uh, electronic ha- microphones and things like that. I don't know. You, I, I, I can't promise you. There's no tax deduction. You just be giving it because you like to. So I recognize that this is not a, probably a fiscally responsible thing to do, but it's there on the website in case you want to do it. Click the old button and donate to Live from the Path, and uh, we will we'll say thank you. And that's uh, I, I bet that's all we can offer you, though. Yeah. Okay. I might sing you Despacito. Oh, really? How much do you have to give? You give $100, I'll record me singing Despacito. The whole song? Uh, yes. Okay. With backing track? I don't, if you can help me make that happen, yeah. Oh, yeah, I can do it. Okay. okay yeah. If you give at the apostle level, if you, $100. <laughs> you give $100 at the apostle level, you can get Uva singing you Despacito. Okay. I, I have a just random, random memory. Like, um, I had some, was it, was it a few months ago, pictures popped up that I had moved around or saved because the time of year wasn't right, but it was from when we broadcast from um, the Midwest, Spirit Midwest Music uh-huh. Festival. Yeah. 
and it, oh, I know. I was, and, and matter of fact, last week I was reminded of it because um, I was running a hotspot off my phone, and I remembered the second year we re- we broadcast from this music festival, there was no internet. Like year <laughs> one, we had this five hundred foot like Ethernet cable that we strewn across the grounds. Oh gosh. <laughs> to, and broadcast all day. Uh, the second one, we went out there and there was no place to get internet. And some dude who was helping at the festival had Verizon that was getting a, a good enough reception. What was it? This would have been 12 years ago yeah. or something for us to broadcast with his hotspot <laughs> out in Charles City or something like yeah, it was or St. Yeah. Charles. And so um, and I, I was flabbergasted by two things. One, the accessibility of hotspots at the time. Right. To do live stream. Like, we live streamed all day. We were on the air for 15 hours or something. Both times. And as a matter of fact, on our first at Spirit Midwest, we did multiple days worth of broadcast. <laughs> and I think we didn't even shut it off till one in the morning or something. Like, we oh, did gosh. 30 hours of broadcasting. That was insane. But uh, anyway... But that the guy handed his phone over for the whole day. Yeah. I thought, what would it take for me to hand my phone to a bunch of dudes and say, here, I'm just going to leave it running. You go ahead and run your broadcast. Talk, and I don't need it for a whole day. He was working there. That was the part that flabbergasted me more, mm. actually, in retrospect. That makes sense. But anyway, it does make me think uh, it would be kind of fun to do a live from the path marathon as if we were going to raise money with no expectation at all that yes. anyone would actually do it. But just like, hey, we're going to be on air for 12 hours yep. just for the hoot of it. I'm totally down for that. Okay. <laughs> I'm in for it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about it because it just sounds fun. I'm, yep. I, I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> I'm in for a live in the past telethon. Because we blamed we blamed the music festival because like, you know, we we would – um it was a it was a real ragtag operation. But like we would send cameras out to the three different stages. <laughs> they would record – three or four songs and then run the tape back or run like the, 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 um, it was a SD card. Uh And then we would just like interview someone and chat for a while and then just fire up the SD card and say, here, here's three songs from the main stage. Yeah. And so, um, it was a lot. In fact, I, I, I found some footage, uh, again, two or three months ago and some of it looks really good. Like, so someone had lent us a really nice camera and like the, it looks real. The video footage itself is (laughs) really good. Anyway, uh, we, I'd have to think about it because we wouldn't have any musical artists to like take up six hours of the marathon. No, it would just be us. Uh, I bet we can line them up. Uh, yeah. We should do it. Okay, I'm gonna think about it. We should. We, our goal is to do a telephone. We, we we could do it for like something real. That would be, oh like so we like, like an le- orphanage legitimately raise money. <laughs> Dan, I'm. You know what? I'm in on it. We should do that. Okay. I'd be willing to do that for real too. Goal for 2024 is we're gonna do a telephone. Okay. This right. sounds fun. All right. All right. Anyway, let's uh, let's do some advice. All right. Dear Life in the Path, I'm 22 and have been dating a 55 year old man. What? Sorry, let me take that back. (laughs) Oh, gosh. I'm 22 and I've been dating a 55 year old man I'll call Gerald for a year now. Because because of the difference in our ages, I've been trying to find things for us to do together so our relationship can be more than just sex. Oh, no. What? Oh, Oh, no. I really love Gerald and want it to work, but how, but how do I make it work when he won't meet me halfway? We really don't have any reasons to fight except for his jealous ex-wife of 11 years. How do I try to keep this relationship? Everything I suggest, Gerald turns down. Is it because deep down he doesn't want to be in this relationship or that he doesn't think I'll, it will go far? Uh, there is no relationship. Okay. You are uh, uh, totally You're a, a piece of meat for him. Yeah. You are a 22-year-old hookup. With a fifty-five-year-old man. Oh, what? A, yeah, yeah, darling, you're being used on this one. Uh, oh. And the only thing that you're getting out of, but I, I, I suppose maybe he's good company in this area. But like, other than that, the man is just using you. He doesn't want to do the things that you want to do. He's not helping enrich your life. Uh, and he brought his past problems that he's created with his other relationships yeah. for you to deal with. This man does not. He does not care about you. Yeah, uh, you need to get out of this. He's tired from previous relationships, and he's looking for nothing serious. And so far, you're willing to get even in nature. You're giving that to him, uh, even though you're kind of questioning it right now. You're just giving him everything he wants right now, which is nothing serious. Yeah, and you you've need- probably been hurt before, which is what led you to this relationship and uh, the willingness to be with somebody that's 33 years your senior and that is not really giving you anything besides. Him getting stuff from you, like come on, yeah, I, I do, and um, maybe encourage you to raise your bar a bit. One hundred percent. So, like your description of we don't really have anything to fight about is a far different thing than saying 
we get along well together. We, we, each other. we support each other. We encourage and build each other up. I feel like this, this man is for me. Like any of these things would be helpful in contextually telling me whether you have a, a, a helpful relationship here. But, um, I just like, I, I think Boo was right. I don't know what your backstory is uh, and what you've had before. It's, it's, I'm sure it feels good to have someone show you the at- level of attention that he's showing you. I'm sure he's at a season of life where like, you're not having to decide whether you're going to go have hot dogs tonight. Like he's paying for good restaurants and stuff, hopefully. But like I, th- that, that is not, that is not a good relationship make. And um, it's harder work to find uh, the right person, but he's not it. Yeah. Okay. Secular says, I'm not a mind reader, but it appears your silver fox is happy with the relationship just as it is. is. That's the reason he shoots down your suggestions for ways to expand it beyond the bedroom. You can't make a relationship work all by yourself. Gerald has to be willing to participate. If his reaction to everything you suggest is opposition, it may be time to move on and find someone with whom you have more in common. Yeah. Yeah, you're better than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. And and I think that's the the biggest lie here is... um, is if you if you believe that you this is the best you can do or like that you've settled for this uh that's you've settled way too low um right. and i'm sorry that that w- whatever has happened to you or that you believe about yourself has caused you to believe that i just take my encouragement um it's not true yeah. it kind of screams true. there's dad problems yeah. doesn't it find jesus she, she's finding daddy and her little boyfriend yeah maybe find jesus and root your identity and your worth in what he says and and step on that and live in that for a minute mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay all right, one more. Uh, at least, yeah. Dear Life of the Path, I was invited to my nephew's wedding out of state and accepted the invitation. It's a four-hour drive. My son wasn't interested in attending, and my boyfriend wasn't sure he could attend due to work travel. The mother of the bride informed me that she had decided to put an elderly relative in my room with me, claiming they were now out of rooms. She's known to be miserly and dishonest. Miser- miserly and dishonest? Yeah, miserly. Sorry. Miserly and dishonest. Was that better? There was no offer to share costs, and it was assumed that I'd transport, dress, and monitor the relative. I ended up declining the invitation, and I regret not being at my nephew's wedding. My boyfriend was able to attend, but by then, I couldn't make an appropriate room arrangement. Thoughts? I don't quite understand this situation. (laughs) Like, this person, are they paying for their own hotel or not? Uh, It it appears as such, yes. They, They got a hotel, and then the person... Uh, the mom of the cousin. Oh, maybe not because it says she's miserly. So you put an elderly relative in my room with me, claiming they were now out of room. So they may have reserved a yeah, hotel room kind of block, block rooms. Okay. at the hotel, okay. and like they just couldn't get any more, so they put the old lady with this person. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I mean, which apparently came with a lot more responsibility. Yeah. Th- now that that part, I guess I'm a little bit. I don't. Did she didn't go? So I mean, how does she know? Is she overreacting? Yeah. Is she misrepresenting the situation she to make it sound worse? <laughs> yeah, like she has. Uh, how does the well? Lady maybe normally she get was dressed? told because there was no offer to share costs, and it was assumed that I'd transport, dress, and monitor the relative. Yeah, I guess that's what I mean. Why would you have to share costs if the if the couple's paying for the rooms? Why? Do, like, I guess I don't know what we're talking about. Uh, the four hour child. drive might have been driving the elderly relative the four hours to. Get oh, there. you have to bring the old the old bag it, with you. It appears as though the only way that this person is getting there. And can have a room is with this person that's going because they don't have anyone else in the room with them. Uh, the son's not coming. The boyfriend's not coming. So they can bring Aunt Shirley and we'll transport her, stay in the room with her, dress her and get her to the wedding venue. Oh, I didn't take I, I, I guess I presumed that they had to stay in the same room. And then the lady was responsible for taking the old lady to the wedding, not driving her the four hours. I, I mean, yeah, I think I that thought. assumption makes just as much sense as I'm sense yeah. as I'm okay. assuming the other way. Okay. So like it could be either. way. I wonder if it's a child, though. Either like a handicapped person or a child. Someone who's disabled and can't dress themselves. Oh, it's not an old lady? Uh, it, uh, She's elderly the old relative. Lady. Oh, yeah. Elderly relative, Dan. Well, I thought she was the one who was elderly. No. no. My son wasn't interested. So the mother of the bride informed me that she decided to put an elderly relative in my room with uh, me. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Here's what I would say. I, I, get, I get that you might be a little bit uh, irritated here. I would have just gone. Like, I, 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 it's, the question is, is how much do you allow a doofus to otherwise drive your decisions. Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. it, it doesn't like, I get that it's not what you were signing up for, but like, does it ruin it? You got to stay mm-hmm. one night with Ethel. And, 
I mean, I, if it, caring for seems a little bit odd, like how does she normally get places? How did she? Uh, yeah. Who takes care of her normal? Like I'm not. I like. I wonder. That just seems like maybe it's just a little bit um, yeah. amplified. Aunt Shirley's in a in a nursing home most of the time, and this person's being res- yeah. responsible for but, bringing her to the nephew's wedding. But I guess think of it this way: if 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 if, if you found out that someone in your family might have might need some help, and you're otherwise not encumbered, let's just assume the boyfriend's not coming, son's not coming. Yeah. And hey, we could really use your help with Aunt Shirley. Would you go? No. So, may, so I get that. Like, they probably should have asked you, right? And uh, maybe the lady's miserly, and uh, you regret that about her. But like, I don't know. I probably, I just, I'm thinking through my own family situation. I would have been a little bit miffed about it, but I'm like, I mean, I'm not gonna miss it just because of this. Okay, I'll help. Mm-hmm. I mean, what what kind of lug? Like, I don't, I don't demand luxury when someone else is paying for a hotel room. It's a. It's got to be like an overnight affair, and then I'm going back home if it's four yeah. hours away. <laughs> right. Uh, it's it's a family member in need, regardless of whatever the temperament is on either of these two people yep. we're talking about. Right. I I probably would just done it. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you're yeah. not there on vacation. You're, you're yeah. just there for family. Right. Yeah. And like, is it gonna make? Will it make sense to you two years from now to have said no? Well, I said no because I was gonna have to help take care of my family member and not get my own personal suite. Yeah. Right. I mean, at the very least, you could just go to a different hotel and yeah. still go to the wedding. And pay, um, yeah, you could buy your own hotel. She's like, it's going to be real. Backing out of everything. Day, you know? though. That's true. That's true. For as bad, for as rough as you're making this sound, you could also spend the $45 and stay at the Motel 6 and mm-hmm. be, you know, like, how bad could it be? Right. But yeah, I wouldn't, if you're, if, did she make mention like, hey, I, I would regret missing the wedding or something? Uh, I mean, yeah, I ended up declining the invitation and I regret not being at my wet nephew's wedding. Yeah, that, yeah. You let, that's you, on her. Yeah, you yeah. were easily, these barriers were not insurmountable. You yeah. gave up way too easy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so the question was thoughts. Uh, Secular said, just this, because you felt the mother of the bride should have asked your permission rather than tell you her plan was for you to babysit the relative. You were within your rights to refuse to do anything that made you uncomfortable. Except for it made you a, a jerk? Yeah. Well, not a jerk. I don't know. I Like, I get, uh, again, I was, I've been thinking about this a lot lately in response not only to some situations my children have been in, but like even situations that I have been in, uh, mostly mostly for work stuff. But I'm like, I, I, who who do I allow to dictate how I behave? Right. Like just because someone else was a buffoon and was inconsiderate or jerked to me or presumed something about me, like okay, yep. what does that have to do with me? The situation that's in front of me, let me make a decision that is agnostic of their buffoonery. Mm-hmm. And like I just I, I'm cautious that too often. Uh, we allow like the the worst kind of people to otherwise direct how you live your life. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like it's just dumb. And so uh, I, again, I she could have been more considerate, but I don't know what that has to do with anything. You should just do the right thing, the thing that you want to do. Okay. Well, let's why. do one more. Dear Life of the Path, I am an active retired man who has a serious problem with my slightly younger sister. Uh-oh. She's a loud and aggressive backseat driver. When she rides in my car, she feels compelled to loudly tell me what lane to drive in and to freak out over how close I am to the car in front and a variety of other issues she imagines. I'm a competent and safe driver, but her loud (laughs) exclamations are not only annoying, they distract me at times, which I'm afraid could lead to an accident. Get in the left lane, she shouts, but she doesn't see the cars behind us that I see in my mirror. She knows how much this bothers me, but seems not to care. Uh I've lost my temper at her for doing it. Any advice on how to get her to refrain from these outbursts while I'm driving? I'm going to tell you a quick story. I tell was, me. I was driving. Uh, I went a way back home that I don't normally go. Uh, there's there's a faster way to go from town A to town B where I live. And uh, for some reason, I decided I'm going to the cheap trick. I'm going to take a long way home. And so I pass a guy. It's starting to snow. It's cold out. It's it's uh, it's actually very cold. This was uh, Is this a Carrie Underwood song. A few days ago. What do you mean? Sorry, go ahead. What's that song? Jesus I'm thinking, takes the wheel. Take the long way home. That's what I was thinking of. Oh. <laughs> uh, anyway, I pass a guy who's out walking by himself, heading towards town C. And uh, he's got a long way to go. There's no town close. The direction he's going, it's like 25 degrees, about a 30 mile an hour wind. It's cold, man. Dude is not prepared to be walking out there either. He feels like he got a windbreaker on. And so I pass him, and it's not often that I'm driving by myself. There's no wife or kid in the car where I, I'm less, like a little more hesitant to pick up somebody. And I think, well, I'm I'm by myself. I normally wouldn't have taken this road, so I'm just going to presume this person's here because I'm supposed to pick him up. And so I whip it around, 
And I picked this guy up, and uh, first thing he goes, I don't know why this move. Maybe this happened to you. Uh, picking up somebody, I would say like half the time they're like, "Hey, can I smoke in here?" I'm like <laughs> this is the first thing you ask. Yep. <laughs> The answer is Mind no. if I light up? Yeah, I'm like, no. Yeah, I've had that a couple times. Let's you celebrate outside, like in getting in the car. It's my daughter's car. I'm like, no, you can't you can't smoke in here. Okay, okay. Anyway, dude gets in the car. And um I said, uh, we started driving just a little bit. He was probably uh five, six years younger than me. And so I said, I you've been walking a while. And he's like, Oh yeah, I walked from town B from roughly my town. So he's been out there for about half an hour, I'd guess. And I said, well, we've been walking, walking long enough. Did you figure out that you're to blame for whatever it is why you're out here? He's like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> He's no, I was I was definitely in the right. I'm like, I just, I find that hard to believe. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so he eventually comes out and he says, I said, well, what goes on? He's like, well, I, we were going to the town, this town to go sell our Nintendo Switch to a friend. I'm like, this automatically seems nefarious. For drugs. I just don't trust. Yeah, you're right. Like, I mean, I don't know. Maybe not. But like, it doesn't. Because I not, cause I thought, I mean, 140 he said it's 145 bucks. I'm like, I'd, I'd pay 150 I don't even need a Nintendo Switch, but it sounds pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he goes, we're on the way there. And my, uh, my girlfriend says, hey, you need to turn here to get to town B. And he kept going because he was going to, he goes, I'll get there. There's another way to get there. And it's just as fast. And I'll just go that way. And that fight escalated. Very quickly. Oh, no. <laughs> with him going, fine, you cake the car. And he gets out and starts walking home. What? And I'm like, this is, I said, these are not, these are not, for a man your age, we don't do this anymore. Right. <laughs> you don't throw, you, you two people, I don't care how wrong or you believe someone else to be. We don't throw tantrums and get out of a vehicle in 20 degree weather and a 30 mile per hour wind because you're arguing about directions. Like, these are not things we should be doing anymore. Right. We need to. We need to mature. You are you at home, like normal people, <laughs> or in the car between these two places. Put on airs when you're selling the switch, and then argue back on the way home. Fine, this is how normal people do it. And so, uh, anyway, it made me think. Like he felt really justified about this. Like that that him putting his feet in the ground about these directions from his lady. Mm -hmm. uh, that he was definitely right. The fight was definitely worth it, and that the action he took in response to that felt really justified. And I thought, this is no. Obviously not. Like this is this is not justified at all. This is a really stupid, stupid argument. And frankly, you had two options, man. Either turn where your girlfriend wants you to turn, just because she likes it. Who cares? What do you care? Was going to save you thirty seconds? Or like, if she's overreacting, you don't overreact. You go, you're right. I could have gone that way, but we're already going this way, so I'll I'll make sure to hit that up next time or whatever. Like, there's right. all there's ways that don't end up in you stalking away. Anyway, yeah. this reminded me of this one because. The big of a deal that we're making about this direction issue, I just I'm hesitant to believe it actually is is worth the amount of effort this yep. man is putting into it. That's fair. So, uh, Dan, what is your advice for him? Stop taking his sister places. Doesn't that seem like an option? I mean, uh, usually if I'm in a situation like that, I'll, I'll just I'm kind of uh, a jerk. I'll just kind of press it a little bit and I'll drive a little closer than I normally would and <laughs> completely ignore what they say and and I'll usually say like you know. I think I got this driving thing down. I don't really need your advice on this. And um, <laughs> I'll say it maybe in a slightly more rude way. Mm -hmm. oh, but if they if they just keep doing it, I'll just harass them. I'll, I'll, I'll torture them because I think... The, I'm, I was I, not anticipating this level. I have never Dan. been in an accident in my life. I've been driving for decades. <laughs> and, and you're telling me like I'm driving too fast or too slow or the wrong lane. I'm like... I got a GPS that tells me where I'm going, and then they'll say, like, no, you got to go the other way. I said, well, the GPS, I'm going to follow it. it. It has a better view than you do. <laughs> That's so funny. So, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Dan Cartesian gonna, over here. I'm going to torture you and drive I do. Closer. I do. I thought they're trying. I mean, they're being rude, and, and they're trying, you know, tor they, they're trying to torture me. It's like, I, can, I just have fun with them. Okay. What a champion. Dan says, hand it back. Booba, what do you say? Uh, I mean, grow up, in my, in my opinion. You're retired. Like, you're an old man. <laughs> and you're like your 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 sister is is bothered. I mean, you've been siblings with this person presumably for fifty plus years. I'm guessing slightly younger than you means that this is not like a twenty year younger. Right. So like you've been you're retired. You've probably been siblings for sixty years, right? Like this should not be surprising to you if you're willing to let her stay in the car. Nothing's going to change. Just go okay. Like you could be annoyed and just deal with it. Yeah. Like your your whole life. 
can't possibly be in a state where you're never annoyed by anything. Like you can be annoyed by things and be a grown up in 99% of the other situations. Let this be that. Just okay. Thanks, yeah. Ethel. I'm going to stay in the right lane. Ah, get in the left lane. Nope, I'm good in the right. Actually, I, so I'm gonna. I think maybe I'll blend a little bit of yours and 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 Dan's answer. I would just say, look very calmly. Uh, I don't appreciate you trying to tell me where to go and how to drive. And so here's what I'm gonna do. Every time you tell me to do something, I'm going to literally do the exact opposite. <laughs> And since you're in my car, I presume that I'm taking you somewhere which you want to arrive on time. And so it will be in your best interest. Hey, get in the left lane. Turn right. I'll turn right right now. <laughs> I will drive us into oncoming traffic. <laughs> I will do. Like there's very th- – hey, you need to slow down. Hit the guns. <laughs> <laughs> say, How long till she figures out reverse psychology? I like, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Hey, turn get right. Get to the right. He went left. And they'll yes. go, that's a, great, that's a great recommendation, sis. I never follow your advice, but I'm going to do it this time. <laughs> turn right. I Like at some point – they're going to get tired of it, and they're going right. to learn their lesson. I just uh, – um, it's been something also that has some both family and work uh, work benefits is that, like, sometimes we try to accomplish the thing, and the only way that we go about it is, like, with brute force. <laughs> sometimes you just – like, influencing people can work. You can get the thing you want without setting fire to the rain. Yep. Uh, it's just going to take six weeks, not six minutes. Right. But it's probably worth it. And so you just stay calm, you stay the course, and eventually she's going to get flustered about it and knock it off. Yep. Okay. All right. Secular says, your sister may not be able to control herself. I'm I'm sure. Which is why she does this. (laughs) Because you find the backseat driving not only annoying, but potentially dangerous. Stop letting her ride with you and your problem will be solved. I'm sorry. Your only suggestion is to not take your sister places? Yep. That's secular's advice. I'm not saying that's not an option. I'm just (laughs) saying that should not be the only suggestion. It appears as though that is the only suggestion. She can't help it? What kind of garbage is that? Yep. He can't help but be annoyed. She can't help but yell at him when when he's driving. Now, listen here. I I was having a conversation with someone earlier. uh, Well, maybe it was late last week. And it was around the concept of – and I think we've touched on this – before just maybe not in quite this context context but like we reach for um labels even things like um it's things like adhd mm-hmm. right like as, and i think about i think about just people and adult dudes that i know i can think of probably five of them that would have just been absolute uh uh fires of of purgatory to have this person in an elementary school dude just wired mm-hmm. right uh, and so they, they would have, I'm sure they would have labeled this dude as having ADHD. And, and the problem with that was, is that like, dude just was not meant to sit around. Right. I'm not sure, frankly, we're all meant to sit around, right? right? Like, like the structure, if you think back, you know, two, 300 years ago, the prime thing that we're doing, your children are doing most of the day is they're up, they're either playing or working yeah. during the day. Formalized schools actually put them to say, you're going to sit for eight hours a day. I'm not sure that we're actually built for that. And so the guy who actually can't handle it, he might actually, he might be ahead of all of us. <laughs> He's the guy who's not been constrained by all this stuff. But anyway, the question would be, what value did we gain? There was, there was a lady who was talking about, oh, I, can't, I can't remember the, how she described it, but it was like, uh, I don't think about my husband unless he's in the room with me. Because I, and then she, there was like a psychological thing was like, it's uh, object permanence or yeah, something. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, right. So, like, if he's not there, I literally never just never pops think of him. <laughs> and which now here's the thing: I, I'm that way with the garbage. If I'm not, like, I don't think of it. I barely <laughs> you don't look, have object permanence for the garbage. I barely, even when I walk by it, I barely notice that it's there to take out. Right? And it was a, a source of frustration. My wife goes, "How could you walk by that garbage and not take it out?" I said, "Literally, I did not look at it and go, hey, I'm not going to take that out. I didn't see it.' Mm-hmm. Right." Now, but here's what, I'm, but over time, I find that this is important to my wife. She says this is like, she notices it all the time. Mm-hmm. She's good at this. Ladies generally are. They see all the things. We see like a 10%. And so, but I'm like, this is important to my wife. And so what do I have to do? I intentionally check for the garbage. It takes thought. It takes leaving notes and things for myself. Uh, and over time, I'm now actually pretty good at this. Same thing with like clean dishwashers. Uh, and I've gotten much better. What I wouldn't have gotten value from is saying, oh, I have object permanence, and so this cannot be helped, right? Yeah, you lack object permanence. It, it, right, I lack object permanence, and so this cannot be helped. Like, it would have done me no no good, uh, and this is the barrier of some of these. Um, I, I don't I, – I always – I struggle with this because, like, I, 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 it's not that I don't think they're not real. 
I think some people are wired differently. I think some people get antsy. I think some people have trouble focusing and it could very well be a physical thing or mm-hmm. a, uh, yeah. a something going on within them. Totally. Um, but the labeling of it risks us going, I have this, therefore I am this as if it is not movable. Yeah. Right. And that is a fallibility. It goes back, uh, move it to things that, that, that we've talked about on the show before, like you're ADHD informed, not ADHD yep. excused. Yep. Right. Like whatever it is, the thing I'm, I'm lack of object permanence informed. Yep. I know I'm prone to this conscientious of what I have. Yes. Yep. Yes. And so I have to take steps in light of that, not go. No, husband, I don't think about you at all. Not my fault. I don't ha- I lack <sighs> object permanence. And so this uh, I can't help it yelling from the back seat. Uh-huh. Bollocks. I right. refuse it. Right. Yes, you can. Yep. She doesn't want to. Uh, thinks it's funny. Uh, struggles. Maybe it's hard for her to be quiet in the back seat. But like. There are very few things where I would accept that says this is totally you and you have zero control. over Right. It. Uh, Tourette's is a good one. Like a lot of Tourette's type of responses. Uh, even some of that is kind of somewhat governed by what you eat at times. It yep. can be depending on what type you have you or whatever. More magnesium. Yes. Like so like <laughs> even then it's possible. But right. like I just I, th- like that is the um, I think it is a fallibility of what is uh, modern within the last decade or so. To be like really reach for uh, I have um, trying to find the label as if that like gives you you're not trying to use it as an excuse like it helps you realize some things about yourself. But when it boxes you in and goes, oh, I can't help that. Well, I bet you can actually. Yeah, I now see the garbage. It took a long time. I I got it. Now, there are plenty of situations in which it 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 is truthful to say that you can't be helped. But I think that the threshold for that being reality is way too high societally. I don't think that that's nearly as true as many people believe it is. I'm sure there's cases where it's like, no, your brain formed physically incorrectly through whatever happened, whatever didn't happen when you were a child or whatever. Right. Abuse is a big thing, especially within babies that can change a lot of like the brain structures where we would be able to to call out things like you can do better. Right. But like. That is not the general story of most people. Yeah, like yes. trauma happens. People, you know, parents suck a lot of the times and like they're doing their best most of the time. Sometimes that's not very great because they're a product of the environment that they were raised in, whatever you want to call it. But like, you're absolutely right. Like, they, they, it, and we keep going back. It's, it's being informed and conscientious of the things that you have, but not being ruled by them or yes. excused by them. Yes. Right. Like there's it, it's uh, it, with me, with my depression, it's 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 I have to be informed of the fact that. Given my own devices, I will slip into a place where I'm sad boy and like everything hurts and everything's rough and all this different stuff. I know that there are things that I have to keep in check or things that I have to do. I have to have good societal converse or good, good outreach to people that can keep me focused and based in a good thing. I have to have truth in my mind that goes and battles the crap that I'm t- telling myself when I'm in a low place, right? I have to be open to the people around me and, and conscientious of that stuff. But it doesn't mean that I'm, I am uh, impossible to be helped or yeah. to help myself. That's a load of crap. Yeah. In yeah. most care. And, and like, we should be encouraged. Like, just think about, yeah. uh, choose a violin virtuoso, a guy who never like, at some point, another dude never played the violin. Now he plays the violin better than everyone Incredibly else. Incredibly so. The humans are are designed with a remarkable ability to learn, to shift, yep. to change, and you do not do yourself a service by 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 taking an acknowledgement of this thing is currently true, mm-hmm. and maybe even finding the reason behind it, and yep. then declaring like looking at it as if that is my shackle. It is not. It is an awareness. I can't. Um, right. I, I should. I, I really should stay away from caffeine. It messes with me. It jacks with me. I have the choice not to choose caffeine. Uh, when I choose caffeine, it is harmful to me. I just have to be able to say no. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes, like I know, anxiousness happens to me. Um, I, isolation will do this to me. But like allowing my mind to focus on something and all the potential implications of something right. for more than five minutes can cause anxiousness in me. I know that. I, I, I know. I'm cautious here only because of how people are going to hear it, not because I actually think there's much of a difference. Like it is the same for me. I I get to choose whether I drink caffeine. I get to choose whether I'm going to dwell on something for more than five minutes mm-hmm. because I know it will cause harm to me, even though it's internal. It's not like a physical thing that I did. I just know that if I sit and, and think about something too long, I get riled up about it. 
I overthink it. It causes me nervousness. And so I have to self-control in the same way I have to say no to caffeine. Yeah. And it's 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 interesting when you start to understand your own triggers and understand your own lures and understand the hooks that grab you, right? Because it's, it's rarely ever going to be a situation where I can't help myself. It may be a situation where I didn't stop myself before I couldn't help myself. Like there was a choice that I made, then a choice that I made, then a choice that I made that led me to a place where I could no longer control because I had given up so much of my own control, my autonomy to the thing that I know is a problem. But like what really happened is it wasn't zero to I can't control anything. It was zero to I didn't make good decisions all the way to the point where I couldn't control myself. Yes. And that's that's the story for every, you know, person who's cheated on their spouse or something like I, I'm going to grant you like there are times where like moments happen and it's hard to get out of them. Yep. Sure. Except for you allowed every other moment that yep. got you in that. Particular you should have freaking path. run. Yeah. Run in the opposite direction at the first sight of, oh, I know what this leads down to. Yes. It's it's the same for the recovering drug addict. It's the same for the, the for the obese gentleman that can't stop eating like. It's never that situation. Do you want do you want to know when I overeat? When I put myself in drive through lines and when I take myself to a buffet and when I knowingly buy the wrong stuff at the grocery store. Do you want to know when I make good decisions? When I don't allow myself to be in a place where I can make those bad decisions. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's the same situation with someone who's recovering from drugs, right? Like you have sobriety. You have broken yourself from that. There are 15 decisions that go from zero to I can no longer control this. You made the wrong one in the first 14 because at the first one you didn't run. At the second one, you didn't freaking turn tail and run. Yes, and I, and I think it's okay to recognize that for a person that's recovering from heroin use, uh, the pull to do heroin today is a lot harder on you than it is on me. Agreed, and that's fine. And like, and I, and it's okay to recognize that. It's okay. In fact, you like as a as a humanity, we should have sympathy on other people. Recognize that some things may be harder. Actually, this this conversation was happening at my house. Over the last couple of weeks, which is like there's people in my family that struggle with uh, self-control around sugar. This guy right here. Definitely. Uh, my wife does not struggle with this at all. If she didn't want to do it, she just go, no, I'm just not going to do it. Uh, I actually I'm not super motivated to exercise. My wife is super motivated. Like it doesn't seem like a lot of extra effort for her. She it just she just is able to do it. Um, but like I look at um, some of my children have kind of have my proclivities and I'm I'm sympathetic towards them because like I get it. You don't have the same motivation. Mm-hmm. It's harder to say no. You're like, that looks delicious. Why wouldn't right. I not want to have even a little bit of that? Right. I want to. And I get it. Um, whereas I think my, my wife would look at it and go like, why didn't you just say why didn't you just say no? Because she doesn't struggle with it. And so mm-hmm. like I, I think it, it is incumbent upon us to be willing to recognize that n- no one is. A lot of people are having different experiences that we are having. You're like, right. dude, why are you even messing around with that? It might tear at a guy to be yeah. to he's 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 looking at pornography all the time. It's tearing at him. Maybe you don't struggle with that, but recognize it's it may be that it, that it pulls at him and then heroin and like whatever all the other things where you're like, why can't you just stop this? It may be harder. It does not release you from the thing that we're talking about, which is you still got to take step one, two, three, four, right. five. You always have the ability to say no. There are very, very few situations of which you physically and emotionally cannot stop yourself. There are. They do exist. Right. But from it's not as often as I think that we're agreeing yeah. to. Um, and I think not it allows us – it, it, the, the problem is that we, we tend to deaden it with medication. And frankly, we deaden it with our own belief of what we can control. We stop fighting. And when you <laughs> stop fighting it thing, mm-hmm. those, then you are just being dominated by it. Yep. You, lose your, you lose your grit. For taking on the world and saying, not only will I not be dominated by this, but I'm I'm going to conquer it. Because like you're spending your whole life on – like it's one of the things I fear is that in trying to fend off temptation, you spend your whole life on defense. And if you're spending your whole life on defense to get that, you're not being on offense on the mm-hmm. things that actually change the world for you, improve your life, like further the kingdom. Yep. They're not happening because you're just like, I'm just trying to stay out of trouble here. <laughs> like that's as, that's just as good as you being trapped. By the enemy, because you're not being effective. And so, like, deadening yourself to going, look, I just can't help but look at pornography and take heroin. <laughs> like, under that, guys, you're the only way for you to stay off that stuff is be permanently defensive. And and you need to come around to the thought that, like, for vast majority of people, it can be helped. You do have the ability to do it. You just need to learn how to do it. It doesn't – like, I don't fault with folks for going, I don't have the tools. I'm not sure how. I keep falling into this. I get that. I sympathize with that. But it's not okay to believe that it can't be done. It can be done. Yep. So stop yelling from the back seat, sister. You got to let it go. It can be helped. Knock it off. All right. All right. 
You're listening to Live from the Path. We appreciate you hanging out with us on the show this evening. And uh, I don't know. Again, I, we, we may be done for the year. I'm not. Uh, I'm not quite sure. We'll see how the uh, the next Monday shakes out. If you have anything for us, hit us up on the Live from the Path. Bob Eisenhower complaint line five one five five one seven zero zero eight five. Call or text five one five five one seven zero zero eight five. In the meantime, be faithful in the means. God will handle the ends. You are listening to Live from the Path. Thank you.